and I'm going to introduce Wendy Ettinger um, from Chicken and Egg Pictures, and she's going to introduce the rest of the panel. So, Wendy. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out, especially on a day like today. Um, Doc NY, uh, Chicken and Egg has been supporting Doc NYC since its inception, and it's been absolutely remarkable to watch it grow. Uh, and we love these opportunities to really amplify uh, the voices of women filmmakers because they're all so brilliant. Um, so I, I'm just going to go down the line here um, and essentially say your names, and then why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, the films that they may or may not be seeing today. Penny is, a, is an editor, so she's going to just help us think critically about them. Um, so Stephanie Wayne-Briel is first up with um, Tough Love. Hi, um, I'm Stephanie wong -Brail. I directed and produced this Tough Love, at, which was um, funded by Chicken and Egg Pictures, as well as my first film, Whiny Mommy. And Tough Love is a film about um, two parents who've had their kids taken from them um, by the state because they have neglected their children and they are trying to get their kids home and out of foster care. And the film is playing right now at, at the festival and it's gonna be playing on Wednesday at 2.45 if you're interested. By popular demand. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Jamila Wignott. Uh, I was the co-director uh, on Town Hall, which played here last year. Town Hall is a film about two Tea Party activists from Pennsylvania who we followed from the midterm, the 2010 midterm election when the Republicans uh, had a sweep up through the 2012 presidential election. And um, spoiler alert, Obama did win that. So. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, I'm Penelope Falk. I've been editing, I look at my IMDb page, I have 21 credits, which is really scary. Um, let's see, films I've done that you may have seen, I did Maiden Trip, I did the Joan Rivers documentary, I did The New Public, um, and I am so thrilled about this panel because actually casting is crucial to a successful documentary, so I think it's great. Thank you. Uh, and, and I'll just add a, um, a small word about myself, is I used to be a casting director for um, theater and film, and uh, my first film was The War Room um, that I produced and Dave Pennebaker and Chris Hedger just directed. Um, and we uh, ended up with James Carville and George Stephanopoulos by process of elimination. Um, but uh, essentially, uh, the casting director part of me was, uh, saw James Carville for the first time um, and being able to see a character like that, just um, a ham, and he was extroverted and it was clear he loved the camera, and so that was just, honestly, it was a blessing because uh, in terms of access, it, it could have gone either way. Um, but Penny, I wanna go um, to you to tell us what, what you, I'm sure directors come to you all the time with their projects, and what you really look for um, uh, in a film and casting and, and um, what you think the important factors are. I pick my film based, like most, the biggest criteria is based on the casting or the character of the film, that's crucial. Um, I was thinking about this panel, there's three things I look for. I'm curious on if you guys think about this when you go and cast and shoot. The, the most important thing I think for any documentary and any character um, where you feel a connection to the character, you, you have to find their humanity and their vulnerability. And if there's not, if I look at footage and I don't feel something, some, some connect, um, I don't have to like them, but I have to feel something, respect them or see their vulnerability. If I don't feel that, it's not gonna work. I guarantee the film won't work. And um, um, that's one, so connectivity. The second thing I need in, this is crucial, casting is uh, access. Because you can have the best character in the world, but if he or she is not going to let the director in and talk to them and, and go deep, you're not going to have a good film either. So I, I've had conversations with uh, new directors who are like, "I have the best character, and they'll let me shoot, you know, for five minutes next week." It's like that's there's no film there. I don't care how good they are. That's two. And the third thing, and this doesn't always, this is really hard, and I know with Verite film it's hard. You want a character as a story, because the best documentaries are when it was when the character they change. There's, there's, there's growth, there's an arc. And you can't determine that when you start shooting, of course. But I've been in situations with multi-character films where I have the best characters, but nothing happens. And if nothing happens, it's hard to work them in. So those would be my three. Uh, what do you guys think? When you, go, when you shoot, do you, do you think about any of those things? Or? Oh, I think that those are spot on, absolutely. I think the first thing about vulnerability, I think that um, if, you're, if your character's not vulnerable, um, then they're not human, and if they're not human, then it's gonna be hard for anyone coming from any, 
class, any race, any gender to really identify with them. So for me, that's like one of the most important um, aspects of just, you know, getting into, because we're really showing not just who they are on paper, who they are in their life. I think I faced that challenge too. Um, I mean, we were making a film about Tea Party conservatives and our kind of interest in making the film in the beginning was looking at the way that the media was extremely pol polarized when they arrived on the scene, um, you know, with the healthcare rallies that were going on and these waves of people showing up, you know, sort of very passionately, um, you know, announcing their opposition to it. Um, and depending on where you were on the political spectrum, obviously you agreed with them or you disagreed with them, but what we felt like was no one was ever talking about these people as individuals. They were always just under this large umbrella. And so that was the impetus for making the film, but it was challenging too to, you know, and I don't know if you found this with War Room when you're dealing with people who, um, you know, you meet them and, and you're making a film that's on the face of it in part about politics, getting at what the human sort of animating factors are that, that, draw, that drew our characters in particular to the movement was, um, was certainly challenging, but but that's why we sort of stayed with them because once we kind of got our hook into the two that ended up being in the film, we understood that you know whether or not you agreed with them at the end of the film, there was something um, you know interesting about what they said about where we were at the time. And both of you have um, done films where they're both verite. There are lots and lots of people to choose from. Um, you have to identify who you think your best characters will be. Then you have to gain their trust, get access, and sometimes I imagine some of them end up on the cutting room floor even after <laughs> all that effort. Um, so Stem, do you wanna take us through a couple of your clips and, and um, show us your experience? Sure, so um, the first clip that I'm gonna show you is basically where I met um, my New York character, Hannah. Um, it was at a organization called the Child Welfare Organizing Project in East Harlem, New York, and every Wednesday they have a weekly parent support group meeting for parents who are going through the system and who are trying to figure out how to get their kids home. And it's led and run by parents who've been affected by the system and who've gotten their kids home. So um, I just sat in that room for like six months for research for this film and they let me film it as well. So um, the first clip is just like sort of just the type of people and the type of situations these people were in. So this is that clip. My name is Ramona Perez. I, um, I'm affected by the child welfare system because my 